maybe tell me, is there anything that's uh, in particular just started off the back and forth between you guys? Yeah, I guess that Perry thing. You know, call him in flight, but I think you want to just hit a guy when he was out. I'm just there to do my job. Kill be killed, right? Ref got a step in on time. I was off my feet. I don't know. It looked like he shoved you out of the way from hitting him in the head, but that's just my point of view. Well, I can't stop him midair. I'm a bird, right? I'm a human. I'm not just gonna come down. He did a great job of saving him. Human bird. So Austin, that's uh, when when you knocked out uh, Perry uh, in that fight. Like uh, you did that uh, crazy wrestling move. Uh, do you practice that in the gym, or did you have that planned, or what? What was going through your mind when you, after the knockout you did that move? Oh, it's just quick instant, right? Street fighting, you know, whatever. I don't practice that move. It just happens. I only practice my left hook. Pretty well, you're good at. That's uh, obviously Austin's. He's fought uh, Justin on the field. That uh, he's a good fighter that went the distance with uh, Curtis area. He also, uh, um, but he finished him right away. So that was a durable guy. He also fought Perry Hare, that spot good guys like Akil. He's, he's fought Christian. And Austin had the fastest uh, KO against him either. So leading into this fight, Christian, you said you're not really worried about his like left hook. But deep down, what do you do to make sure he doesn't use that weapon against you? Well, what happened in those other two fights is those men feared uh, Batra, but uh, I'd have no fear of him. I, I'm, and my, my style, I mean, I just, I sit there, you want to throw at me, you know, I shell. You know, I, I don't back up. I shell, I throw. I, I shell, I throw. I find openings, and I'm going to find yours. Austin, you think that's going to be a good strategy against you? Throw whatever strategy you want. Every game plan gets thrown out of the window once you get hit. We'll see what you bring September 30th. I ain't too worried about you. I'll see right through you. Now, he's fought some good guys. Christian, I mean, uh, he also beat Nick Ganey. He's got a win over Paul Smith. So you gotta respect some of them. They're midgets. Midgets! Fucking five foot eight, one thirty fibers. What the fuck did you do? You have never fought me. You never fought this motherfucker. I'm fucking eat you right now. I'm fucking just waiting. You don't intimidate me, man. I'm just waiting. What are you fucking shaking over there? I'm in your head. I live rent free there, buddy. Look at the emotion spewing out of you. This is business, and I'm gonna fucking take care of it. We'll see. I'm in your head. They're reposting my shit. You on my cloud, motherfucker. So when he, there was a video on social media that uh, Christian had a couple of days ago, but it had, I don't know how that actually worked, but it had your, your voice. Uh, it was in the story saying that you don't want to. Uh, cut the weight. It was posted. Like, oh, I stopped weight. cutting weight. You know, this guy's a chop. I don't need to make weight. Man, you know what BFL stands for? Batra fight, leave. Man, this guy's full, so full of shit. Like, he's saying he's not cutting weight, but this motherfucker, look at this guy. Look at his fucking hands. Look at his face. He's all fucking dieted down. We'll fucking make that 158, and if we don't, I'll fucking rehydrate up the fucking seven pounds that the commission requires. So, if you want to weigh in at 170, fuck, that's five pounds of rehydration. I can do that in a couple hours. Perfect. Yeah. Show you up. come in whatever you want. I'm, Show up. You sign the contract, buddy. That's your death warrant. That's fine, man. I sign any contract. Money is money. This is business for me. You're I like to smash. Money. I like to smash. Money. I like to smash. You're in it for the money. You want the money before because back when I pull out, I don't pull out. I don't career ending injury. That's well, what what the only that? reason. That's the only reason. The doctor's like, I might need you to, you know, hang on. You might fucking end your career. I'm like, well. I left to fight, I'm dying to live anyways. When so, have you ever been to a doctor that told you anything was good for fighting, buddy? Like, fuck yeah, they all tell you that it's a career ender. <clears throat> this is the fight business, buddy. We work around injuries. We train around them. Alright, alright. Bring it September 30th. Two, two and a half weeks it took me to pull out from my last fight because I was trucking through every single training session, super gluing my fucking eye shut. Perfect. Do it. Do it. It looks like you're doing it right now. Yeah, Give me face. Give yeah. me face. Yeah, I'm you wanna know why? Because I train with fucking pros. I'm bust that face open. I don't train in my fucking garage. I train with professionals. Oh, perfect, I train man. With... Awesome. I'm gonna be the garage trainer, mm -hmm. man, that mm -hmm. made it out of the hood. You know, I'm gonna put Abbotsford on the out map. Out of what hood? Abby I'm, no I'm hood. gonna put Abbotsford on the map, man. I'm gonna be a fucking warrior. You know, if this were a different time, I'd be on my fucking horse, fucking piercing you with my fucking arrow right through your fucking face, right through the eye. The one this fucking dude shot right now. Fucking right in. Bam. Right there. Right on your fucking brain. Pull it right out. 
Yeah, I ain't no scared. This is fucking shit. Look at this. I'm fucking wearing my pride with my fucking colors. Look at this. I'm a fucking, I'm a Sikh warrior, bro. I'm a Sikh fucking warrior. Look at, I wear it on my sleeve. Look at this shit. Look at that. That's good, I'm a fucking Sikh warrior. That's good, you know, it runs in my bloodline. I ain't scared of no shit. It says, look, look what it says. Look what it says. I, I can't read it. You can't read it? It says, no, 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 You know, it's for fear none, respect all. You know? I don't fear none. I don't fear no one. But I respect all. Bro, 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 Fuck bro. that. Look, look what you did to Perry, bro. You respect him? What do you mean? I was mid-flight. I can't fly? If I could fly, I'd fucking, you know, sit, I, I'd go to the side. But I'm very happy that the ref saved me. I don't, I, I don't want to cause per crazy permanent damage. I'm just there. The flick switch is on. Bats is tucked away. The juggernaut's on. The juggernaut's active. This is what I do, bro. This is what I, this is what I live for do. I got bullied my whole fucking life. This is just an escape so I can fucking smash motherfuckers. You yeah, think man, I'm a joke, bro? Violence. You know, you, th you think I'm a fucking joke and shit, man? Your coaches know about me. Your coach is setting you up for a death wish, man. <sighs> I'm done, bro. Like, you know, you can talk all your shit, but, you know. I got Yo, all you know, that shit off you know my fucking Bibi, soldiers. You know what Bibby said your odds were of winning this fight? Fucking probably zero because they want to hype you up. Bro, this, bro they want to confront you up. Look at how much you're fucking talking about me, man. Everything on your social media, batch for this, batch for this. Bro, I hope you fucking have those pad reaction timing because I'm going to make sure that fucking my timing is way faster than that. I'm going to boo fuck your ass, man. And if I don't, well, you couldn't and if I don't, 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 I'll improve, man. You know what I mean? I'm never gonna stop. I'm gonna fucking do whatever it takes for me to get there. You ain't, you're just a stepping stone in the way, you know? And if you do beat me, man, I'll give you bro, all the respect. Already one -one. I'll give you, you have all no the armor defense. You have no jiu-jitsu whatsoever. You Who get, cares? You think if Who you cares? get past me, there's okay. anybody that's like, no, there's no getting past Yo, me, bro. Every fight there starts on the fight. fucking submission after submission after submission. You're fucking done. You got knocked I'm gonna expose that you have no fucking grappling you lost, whatsoever. You lost to Perry. He's a fucking glass jaw one punch. You lost to Perry. What, what power do you Bro, possess? Bro, what was I fucking like 21? <laughs> working so fucking what? 60 hours was, a week on 20, the Portman demo? I was 22. So it doesn't make any sense. I was 21 or 22 myself. I beat Justin Oz. Yeah, he, he has better jiu-jitsu credentials than you. He has better jiu-jitsu credentials than you. Talk better jiu -jitsu credentials that was than you. fucking long, long time ago, bro. Better I was a fucking, like you said, I was better my last win was a buck 48. You know what I'm walking around at? Fucking 182, baby. Bro, we'll just fucking make 182. The weight. Make the weight, man. Yeah, buddy. I make will. Make the weight. Perfect. Make you look and like I'm a fucking you. chump. Awesome. If you do, then I'll improve. Then I, that, that means that I didn't take it buddy, seriously. Buddy, what was your last... How much did you uh, miss weight by last time? I never miss weight. <laughs> No, just, I'm just missing weight just to fucking get on your side, in your head, bro. Like, I just don't want to fucking, I don't respect you at all. Like, in a sense, like, oh, all, yeah, this, so shit I, you, oh, all yeah. this shit that you posted, right? Fear and none, just, respect just, all, what happened to that? You bro, don't you disrespected me. me, you disrespected me. You think I'm going to respect someone? Perry never disrespected me until he's like, oh, he's a better wrestler than me. I was like, oh, I'll show him. And then I just beat him in his own game. Then Justin Alder, I feel, he never talks shit. Me and, me and him are like fucking buddies. I even shook his hand after. I'm like, yo, come train with me and shit, bro. I have respect for all and my opponents. Did he come to your garage? Hmm? Did he come to your garage or? No, who knows what he, he I'm pro I probably think he's retired, man. Like everyone that I fought, they've never fought again. Never fought again. Check the history. Who's okay. fought again okay. after well, the look at my early career, buddy. I went like one and four. Bro, right? Nick Ganey, nobody... if you're basing... No, no, no you're... I'm talking my fucking early amateur, buddy. Okay. So I went one and four, right? Working 60, 70 hours a week, you know, fucking 10 hour days every fucking day. Then you want to tell me that you're going to fucking retire me? That I'm, you're going to be my last fight? Who knows? What if I... You want to tell me I don't know about adversity? Buddy, adversity is what I eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Awesome. I do too. We're in the same boat. We're chasing the same dream. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just uh, just chat really quickly about your mentality, like uh, coming into this fight. What is like the most important uh, thing for you guys coming into this fight? Is it just like, a victory? Do you want to be like dominant? Do you want to get a knockout, submission, just embarrass the other person? What's the most important thing to you? My mentality has always been the same: kill or be killed. Everyone knows it. And after I made, like, it went viral. Everyone saw what I possessed, so it's just like, yo, what is this mentality? It's never just shifted. Oh, perfect. Oh, you know, correct that for me then. Hit me with the left. Oh, that's not you. That was right. Perry. You know, hit me with that then. You know, you correct it then, bro. When I get you with the same shot. This, this is a fuck of a lot different than this. Perfect. Then show me. September will, 30th, will, show me, man. You know, you're all talk, man. It's all good. I love it how you're promoting the fight. You know, it's all you. It's all you that's been doing it. I just showed up today just to give you like a little freaking sense of reality that listen, man. You can just you know chipper, chipper, chipper on the internet, but once you see them in person, man, it gets really real, man. You know, you can piss off a lot of people. It's like Corey Motherwell said, man. Then Ben Asker. You know, you piss off a lot of people, and it's just like you know sometimes you wake some motherfuckers up, man. 
you know, you woke the motherfucker up. You know, it's just like, let's go, man. Like, you know, like, I don't give a fuck about this fight game. You know, this is just an escape. This is an escape for me. You know, like, you know me, oh, fucking this guy got kicked out, oh, fucking this and that. You know everything about me. You know, it's just like, yo, fucking, this is an escape. I can't get in trouble. You know this. I know this. Everyone knows this. So it's just like, I save it for the ring. I save it for the cage. No matter what the fuck's going on in reality, I'm not going to do anything in reality. I can fuck up and fucking waste it. You know, I'm going to do this in the cage. When I'm safe, even if I kill you, I'm safe. Fuck, I signed the same line you did, bud. I ain't Perfect. scared. Good. How do you guys separate the reality from uh, like the training? Like, how do you guys separate like uh, the in cage persona between like uh, like what do you guys do outside or when you're like even just watching other people fight? What's the difference between uh, in the cage and outside the cage? Uh, well, like when you got an elevated staff of training partners, you're pretty much just hitting harder. That's all. Awesome. It's just like it turns on, right? As they get closer and closer, the guys that I train with, they're they might not be like you know, like your world class level, but fucking anybody steps inside my gym, they don't get, they don't lead the same. And you know, you're just doing this smirking smirk rate. You can ask a 170 pro champ. You know, he came to our gym and he never left the same. No shots fired. None taking out respect the guy. Love the guy. He's 170 champ. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, I don't know unless you have that one. You can so ask this is what him. I'm saying. Respect. Talk, I respect you're, him. You're, I said I love him too. You're digging and your yeah. own grave, bro. Like you're saying, that I'm talking shit, digging my like digging my own grave, pissing off a lot of people, waking up giants. And you're talking about I'm talking most hated. I already said that. Welterweight. I'm yeah, most, most hated. hated, most feared, buddy. Jared fucking revels on the fucking. I'm not that weight class buddy. anymore, bro. I'm not that weight class anymore. It doesn't I'll fucking matter. You're saying I'll I'm be 165, roster. 165, 170. Give me that name, I'll do it. I don't care. Like, Anyone then, fucking get it. Isn't that what you said? Any motherfucker can get it, but he sent me the name, right? Who wants it? You want it now, and then after that we can deal with someone else. I can put on some size and fucking go back to beating 170 years. I don't care, bro. Mm -hmm. I, You're I, not that I, level, I, yo, though, everyone's talking about this level. pandemic and shit. You're I can tell you, I literally level. got the COVID fucking bullshit in December. Lost, I lost a little bit of weight. I didn't put on some size because of fucking this whole gym shit. I haven't worked out. I literally leaned the fuck out, right? So it's just like, yeah, it's now I'm out, now I'm out, now I'm out. Too much before. Yeah, it was, right? It's just like, it's too much to fucking keep up with. And now it's just like, I'm healthier. You know, I feel great. I feel the best I've ever been. And, you know, Good. like no I say, I'm a, I back up whatever, everything I say. They can give me that name, bro. Like, if I'm going to go and fucking you know, piss off these motherfuckers, I said it in the most <laughs> nicest way, too. I didn't want to mention his name. I said 170 champ, you know? You guys said it. At the end of the day. Yeah, I needed you to say that out loud. Yeah, I didn't want to say it, man. Why would I, why would I want to say it? Cause I don't instigate shit. I just finish shit, bro. You, I'm the most quiet guy in the world. I'm the fucking lion in the room, you know, with all these fucking little sheeps and shit. Fucking gazelles, like fucking, you know, turning their back on the fucking government, getting the jab and shit. Fuck that shit, man. You know, you're born in this fucking world. You don't die in the same world. Why do you want to fucking put a jab? Like, is, is there anything you guys bullshit. agree on? You're not vaccinated, are you? No, we agree one thing. That's the only you, thing you guys are born agree. not vaccinated? Yeah, is there any way, is there any chance you guys shake after this is all over, that like you guys, said, after the fight, you shake each other's hand or not? This all is right. all business, like, this guy continues like doing all this fucking bullshit, like, you know, like trying to like, you know, promote a fight like bigger than it is, like, then I'll just like, you know, become like Khabib and Connor. But if he like, you know, actually smarts up and realize like, okay, like taking a step far too far, like I get this promotion, I think this is like, you know, more than promotion, then fucking, you know, we can keep it at that, you know, keep it in promotion level or we can go outside and do Khabib and Connor. Like, I don't mind. This is my life, you know, everyone knows about it. Fucking, I don't keep any mysteries in my life. I'm just open book. So. But won't you guys like leading up saying you don't really like, you're both saying the other guy is not really too skilled. So are you selling the fight? Do you actually both believe that? Because both of you guys said the other guy is like, you know, he's got no skill. I don't know anything about him other than like he did some more tie fights that he said and he has great jiu-jitsu that he's a brown belt. But fucking, he did, he did disrespect me. I'm not going to give him any credit. I'm going to be fuck his brown belt. Man, I'm a fucking black belt in wrestling. Then he's like, fucking, I suck at wrestling. So it's like, whatever, fuck his shit. He fucked my shit. So, in MMA layman's terms, like, he thinks that because he's mad at me, because I disrespected him, that he can kick the shit out of me. But that's just like everybody just just jujitsu 101. You know, you don't spaz when you're in a bad position. You don't get yeah, mad. You don't get emotional. Man. All that fucking my spaz, my emotion is like, you know, be portrayed in the fight. We'll see what happens. We'll see what. 
version of the juggernaut or bats or whoever fucking shows up in the cage you deal with right right now. Like, you know, I'm already spreading out the truth. Like, I have different personalities. Like, there's bats, there's juggernaut. And then bats is a really nice guy, socialized, you know, ha 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 he he. And then there's fucking juggernaut. And that's the person that gets unleashed on these guys. And I'm telling you, fucking, it's fucking crazy to deal with. And I don't know how people deal with me, but it's fucking crazy. I get fucking blown away too sometimes. That's so you guys have both been amateur champions in championship fights. He's fought Cole Smith. Uh, you won against uh, Ajla Field. Yeah. And then uh, you had the belt. Uh, you you kind of defended it against Perry. And then you were heavily favored in your pro debut. And then on that fight, and I think it was in Alberta or something, uh, you lost, you were heavily favored, but you lost. How's your mindset different going into this one? Obviously, you're a completely different fighter. You, you learned from that fight. Yeah, the mindset never really changes because, like, in my mind, like, it was hometown referee, hometown guy. My arm was hyperextended, it hurt. I was like, ah, fuck shit, you know, like, whatever. And the guy, like, thought that was a verbal tap. Like, I'm letting him let my shit break. So I'm telling you right now, this interview, whatever, where the cameras are, let my shit break, you know? I don't give a fuck, you know? You ain't gonna hear a tap, like, fucking, this guy has my arm, boom. If he has me in a triangle, fucking let me go to sleep, you know? As long as no fucking leg locking shit, man, we good, but I'm fucking. But, fuck it, like I said, like, that motherfucker, that he had me in an arm bar, I slammed him, and still, I was inches away, you know, away, and I had, I, even if we see the fight footage, I had my both hands locked, and the guy based it on saving his hometown guy on the feet. You I were trying to punch up. your way out of an elongated arm bar. No, oh. no, no. But he, I did that because he pissed me off. Then I realized, like, okay, this is not going to work. Then I put my hands together, gable grip, you know? And then I tried to sneak my elbow. And I, right when my elbow's past the fucking... They tell you in the point. rules meeting, buddy. The they don't tell me do shit, Do not bro. make what any mean? noise if you're in a submission, and we will take that as a verbal tap. No, oh, man, they didn't tell me shit in that fucking rule meeting. And Plus, I'm man, like, if you're as tough as you think you are and you want to let that shit break, fucking let that shit yeah, break Yeah, I was, silence, I was. Bro. He, sa he fucking saved, he silence. saved HBK. I'm not even going to get into it with you, bro, because you're just trying to, like, you know, base that, like, old verbal submission, letting that get over your, over your fucking head. Because if you see the whole fight, I was piecing him up on the feet. This referee saved the guy, because if I got out, I was going to fucking kill him bro at the end of the day did HBK ever fight again no I told you a retired motherfucker that guy sitting at light heavyweight eating burgers you telling me he beat you and then retired and yeah. so you're calling that you retired that motherfucker yeah cause he's scared he's fearful <laughs> he'll never fight me again I, rec I called him out so many times he'll never fight me again is you that know? one you want back if he agrees to it you want that oh perfect back? after I'm done with this guy yes now, both you guys, obviously, you're... I'd like, I'd like I'd take a shot at Michaels, too. Oh, perfect. We're on the well, same boat. No matter what you guys say, you're obviously both uh, talented guys. And your division is 155 now. So yeah. at, at 155, obviously, Achilles has gone to UFC, UFC maybe contenders pretty soon. But that division is wide open. So, I mean, the, like near the top of that division is guys like Dario. And you, you were set to face him uh, for the amateur title before. And then you guys are familiar with all those guys. So first, uh, starting with question, how, how do you think you, with uh, taking out Achilles, because he's gone, I'm glad how do you that match up gone. against the rest of that division, the 55 division? You, you, you feel like you can take on anybody if you win this fight? I'm glad that Achilles is gone, first of all. Like, that's, you know, overly deserved, like, long awaited. That guy's way too much talent. Motherfucker's been in here since, like, 17 or some shit. So good on him. You know, it's late pickup on the UC, but once he's there, he's gonna do good. But <clears throat> the reason that I'm saying is I uh, kind of respect for him, right? But if we had to do business, I'm not afraid to dance with them, right? It's not, I'm not trying to give the bad vibe, but glad that he's gone. And, you know, he gets that 155 belt. And, you know, for this shit, it's just like Dario, you know, look at his last fight. He missed weight. You guys have fucking bloated 170, trying to make one in 55. Like, can't do it. He's unhealthy for him. He's like in his 30s and shit. Like, you know, you should go settle down with the family. It's just like, if you're gonna eat all this food, fucking know, like, you know what your limits are, fucking, you know, don't just be like, oh, I'm gonna fucking do this and then come in, lose your fucking last fight, get a hometown fucking favorable fucking decision, you know, the shittiest performance, <coughs> got taken down, taken down, taken down, by a guy that just wrestles, like, that has no stand up, I you know, so, it's time. like, you know, like, uh, Nick, you know, like, I love you too, bro, like, you want that fight, fucking, you got robbed, but I'd fucking piece you up. Dario, you can dance with me too. I'll eat you up too, cause I'm telling you, my wrestling is better than Nick's, and my stand up better than fucking Dario. So it's just like Dario wants to dance, I'll take him down like Nick did, and I'll fucking eat him up. Nick wants to dance with me like with this. I'm not Dario. I'm not. I'm gonna have the wrestling defense. I'll, I'll eat you up on the feet. You, my friend, me and you gotta dance together. So let's prove it. Like you know, who's the one to eat these guys? Cause if you're better than me, you can probably fuck these guys up. If I'm better than you, then I will fuck these guys up. 
Um, Christian, do you think you're ready to, uh, like after this fight, to uh, face guys like Dario? Yeah, um, yeah, I think I'd, I'd approach the Dario fight similar to uh, his last one there, you know, just uh, cage wrestle the fuck out of him. And I think that's like the, uh, the move on, on Dario, he's got some heavy hands and, uh, but fuck, I mean, I signed the contract with Botcher here, so, you know, fucking not scared of heavy hands. Um, aside from that, um, no, there's no real standouts. Uh, I'm just looking to string some wins together, it doesn't really matter who. Um, yeah, at the end of the day, stringing wins together. That's the name of the game. And he, Austin was just earlier saying that, yeah, you've, you've got beat guys, but they were midgets. I think he's referring that there were 135 and 145ers. He's coming down from 170, but this fight is at 155. 158. 158. Um, 158. Do you think size, the, size matters now that you've balked up and you're, you have a man's body and you guys are the same age? Do you think he's saying that the power is different? He wrestled at 205 and he's knocked out people at 170 and you've been fighting 45ers. So do you, do you think there's any ability, like that's a valid comment or he's just saying that? No, I think physics fucking, I mean, you know, like he probably has some good bone density to him coming down from 225 wrestling in high school and shit. But you know, um, we all have our advantages, you know, the littler guys, we're, we're a little faster and stuff. And um, you know, we both weighed in at the same as our opponents. So, you know, it doesn't matter that they were smaller. It's not like I was fucking some 170 year fighting fucking 135ers, you know, I, I was the same weight as them, you know, me and Gain, we fought at 50, I think I weighed in at 48. My next fight, 48.9 or something, you know? Uh, I was fighting at 150 a long time. And then, finally- So you're telling me you're gonna fight ballooned out bantam weights at 150, so you're to your advantage, right? So you have a bigger advantage. Fuck bro, I was a skinny little fucking skin and bone. Who cares if you're skinny, man? It's David versus fucking Blythe, bones, man. Dude. It's just like fucking some midget versus some fucking tall motherfucker. Yeah, bro, but look at me now, I'm fucking bigger than you. Perfect, man. I'm glad that you're bigger than me. This is like, you know, like, this is what makes it interesting. Can this guy overcome this big motherfucker, like six foot one, you know, like who, however tall you are. So it's just like, you are the biggest test. You talk to your shit and it's just like, no, it's just like time to settle our fucking thing. You know, like I'm not the one to talk. I like any fight that they've sent me, Gianco sent me, Alberto sent me. I've never talked my shit. I just like say how it is. Like I'm not even talking my shit here. I'm just confident in what I do and with what, what I do with my team. And if you think I just do shit in my garage and hit the bag and shit like that, like fucking perfect. Like I'm bang on, like you're on bro. That's all I do, man. Like, now, Austin, a question everybody's asking is like earlier in your career, obviously you had the tendency to fade on the fights that went later in your career, but now you're slim. You've lost like a lot of that muscle mass and you look leaner and you're like, do you think that problem has been rectified and it's gone now that you're at the right weight class? Uh, it's like it comes and goes, you know, like, like I said, like the whole before the pandemic is all about body mass, you know, get that big body, look something sexy as shit, you know. You know, bam, bam, bam. But now it's just like, you know, different goals, you know, different aspirations. Can't go to the gym, have to wear this mask, gotta get the fucking vaccine. So it's like, nah, man, like, I'd rather just do my shit. I've like, you know, like, I know a little bit, a few things that I've learned from a wrestling thing. So it's like, it's not too hard to work out. And if like, you know, this is where I fit into all of this, then this is where I fit into all of this. I'm not gonna be like, oh fuck, I gotta dip or I gotta start drinking some fucking protein shakes to gain weight. It's like, that's not who I am. Never shied away from adversity. Like my whole life's been adversity. You know, this is just like this is just an escape for me to like show, my, showcase my talent. And like, if I can do it on UFC Fight Pass, the biggest stage of them all, then let it be known. And then fucking hopefully Dana White, fucking Mick Maynard, or fucking you know Sean Shelby soon again, motherfucker. You know, you get your popcorn ready. And Christian, you were saying that like you all, we're all tough guys here. Anybody who fights, MMA fighters are tough guys. So the the Austin puts on like the tough guy act to get in their opponent's heads. Do you think that's true? Uh, yeah, a little bit for sure. I mean, uh, you know, it gives off this persona like he's got baddie and he's got the juggernaut, right? And he switches gears and he sees red and all that shit, you know. But you know, like that's that's what we're training for, you know, like. I just, I, I don't see it as that. I think uh, if you're in a chaotic state when you're fighting, like, then you're not doing what you should be in the gym because you're not being put in places where you're, you're fucking flying high and making those razor 
minute, second, uh, millisecond decisions. When you're being put in those stressful situations where you're getting your fucking face slammed against the wall and there's nothing between uh, that fist and the back of your head except for the cage, you know, like these, these moments, those are what craft us. And I think you not having been put in those situations, that's what makes you mentally weak. Surely. If oh, I will. No buddy. one's will. been put, like, you know, like... Like, this is how, this is exact, this is how the fight's gonna go, okay? So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be jabbing you at range. You know, you might try and get me forward, but somehow I'm gonna get your back against the cage. I'm gonna swim in. I'm gonna get a nice single leg. I'm gonna hold your other arm against the cage. I'm gonna pull you off a little bit. I'm gonna trap that arm behind the back. I'm gonna give you a couple shots. I'm gonna drag you down. Maybe even pick you up and fucking dump you on your head. But when I get you against the cage with that arm trapped and your other arm trapped behind my head, it's gonna be punch, punch city. And I bet that verbal tap comes real quick. I'll let my face rearrange before any verbal tap. Like I tell you, I don't tap. Like let my shit break. I, I live to die. I'm living to die, man. Like if you can end me tomorrow, like September 30th, cool, bro. Like, Perfect. My buddies, everyone knows, like, they're not gonna cry. They're gonna celebrate because this guy did what he loved to do. You know, like, if you can kill me, you're putting a lot of people at peace. You know, if I bring a lot of chaos, you know, like, around me, it's like a lot of chaos. And if you're the one to be my Grim Reaper, perfect. And people will salute you, like, bang, you know, this, you fucking, you know, did this, bang, they salute you. But I'm telling you, you're not. What's gonna happen is fight's gonna start standing and you're gonna get on your ass, real quick. That's it. That big left hook, eh? Let it be a left, let it be a right, let it be a left hook, let it be a right, you know, anything. But right now what I've been working on, and look, you can see my knuckles, just my left hand, just my left hand, just boom, over and over again. This is what you saw in my video, on Instagram, on my heavy bag. You know what that video reminded me of most? Was, uh, you ever seen that uh, Stuart from Mad TV? Look at what I can do. Yeah. Look at what I can do. And this little Stuart, whatever, is gonna fucking boo fuck your ass. That's it. And oh, like, man, it's gonna like, make a perfect storyline too. And that's the other thing too, is like, nobody in your camp was like, bro, do not post that fucking video. Yeah, cause they're like, yo, you're hitting the bag so bad. Is there any chance, like, uh, let's just say you knock him out, like even if you look at my, uh, sorry to, try yeah, to cut yeah, you off, right? Yeah, even if you look at my other MMA promo videos, right? Look at how I hit the bag. I hit the bag exactly the same. No height. You go search it up right now. Austin Blackshaw promo video, exactly the same. Bah, bah, bah. And even in my kick, it's like that. Don't search it up, man. I don't give a fuck how I hit the bag. It's like only, only thing that matters is how I hit your face or hit the body. That's all that matters. That's true. That's true. Like when people put bag videos thinking that they're impressive in general, that's kind of bullshit anyway. So. Bags don't hit back. Yes. Yeah. Let's let's just say like uh, Austin, you hit him with the perfect shot. You knock him down. Oh, the Boom. flying bat's not gonna happen. We're never gonna see the flying bat again. Will it ever come up? This guy's not talked that much. Yeah, he's not done that much yet. But like, say like you know he dead fucking. I knock him down. He calls, and he goes in guard and shit. Yeah, you might see it. But if he's um, lying unconscious, like Perry, why why take the risk again? Like fucking, I learned from the first time. Like. Okay, <laughs> even though like, you know, I, how crazy am I played in my head, like, okay, there's a lot, of, the whole world's watching, so, okay, and I got a lot of hate, got a lot of love, okay, you know, it, it made me who I am now, like, I just don't give a fuck, you know, that, that's how I live my life, I can die tomorrow, I can die today, I close my eyes, I'm risking dying, you know, like, when you sleep, it's just like, a uh, cousin of fucking death, so. Are you worried that uh, Christian might do something crazy, because he's a little bit, he's done a few things in our promotion, too, do you remember Gag and Gil when he won the title against Nick Ganey? Um, Christian was in the crowd and he went to backstage to challenge uh, Gagan right in the back when he was seeing the doctor to get the next title shot and fight. Security had to break it up. Are you worried that he might do something crazy after the fight? No, fuck. Like, if he does, then props to him because, like, you know, he brings the same mindset as me kill or be killed. Like, I ain't that scared to die. Like, you know, my warriors were the bloodline that I come from. Like, we're all warriors, so it's just like. It's just like years and years and years of being bred and being kept a warrior. And that's my mindset. I don't keep like, you know, pussy ass and pussy minded men around me or like guys that like think like, oh, like, you know, we can have the easy way over. So like, no, like we're all wake up, train, wake up, train, wake up, train. And it's just like, that's, that's the mentality. And like, you know, this guy and me have some shit in common, but 
you know, don't let that they can distract you from the fact that this guy talked a lot of shit and you know it's become business, personal business now, you know, not instead of business, personal business. So it's just like we'll handle that. After if he wants to be my friend, like I told him like I'll after the fight yeah, I'll give him some fucking stuff, like, you know, some edibles and fucking some marijuana and shit, we'll fucking shoot the shit, but we'll see how the fight plays out, right? Even if I you know, like things don't go my way, like fucking still gonna <clears throat> hold my word, I'm not gonna be a petty loser. Like like I hold my head up high. Even when I lost my last fight, everyone the whole crowd knew everything, like I I hold my head up high. I can't wear the crown if my head is down low, so I always hit sit up like this. You said before he's not the most dangerous guy you face, but do you do you think that he's the most well rounded fighter out of your last oh, fight before? For sure. But then then again, like uh, I can go back to Justin Ogilvy Field, right? He had a great jiu jitsu, he possesses great jiu jitsu, then he comes from a stand up gym, right? Like and then <clears throat> he says he has Muay Thai fights. I can just compare all these fighters like HBK himself, a Jiu Jitsu guy and then fucking whatever stand up. But yeah, for him, uh tallest guy, most big structure. Yeah, like biggest test of my career, safe to say, but very first fight that I've had, if you know people don't don't remember is I fought Alex Reed or some shit like that. And he was a big guy like you and I just wrestle fucked him. Or oh, like like I said, I may wrestle fuck you too. So just be prepared, right? Like if you say you have good jiu-jitsu, be prepared. Put me in a triangle, put me in an armbar, get a good down and cook. Get an arm a three. I don't want to open up your scar and shit. You know, it'd be pretty ugly. I don't want to make you look like Nate Diaz and shit. You know, just uh, Langley Nate Diaz. Uh, fuck, I already got 50 stitches in my head. Fuck, bro, fuck. That's and the name of the sport. A bunch of well-rounded guys. You said he's, he's definitely not the most well-rounded fighter you face, but do you, do you think he's the most dangerous fighter you face? Uh, yeah, I'll give him that. Oh, fuck, fuck yeah, I'll give him that. Um, you know, he changes, changes, uh, changes the fight with one punch, so uh, I'll, I'll give him that for sure. But I think I got the defense to deal with it. And uh, obviously, uh, most people think he's the most dangerous in the first minute and a half, two minutes, because he's been able to finish, he's been more successful in the first couple of minutes. Um, but you also mentioned that he's gonna shoot after that. After the first two minutes, he's gonna shoot because he's not kind of like the stand up. Is that is that just something you were saying to solve the fight, or that's that's how you think the fight's going now? He no. just told me his game plan. He's gonna put me against, but he's take me down. So I ain't gonna be shooting. He's gonna be shooting. So fucking, he's, he's selling the fight, man. I'm telling you, he, I'm in his head. He doesn't know what the fuck to do. He's gonna get punched in the face, and when you say when you say that you his whole game plan in my head, head you do. You're right. You live in my head. Good. Day and night, I'm thinking of ways to finish you. So when I say he's going to shoot on me, it's because I've envisioned having him on the fence, throwing one one twos, you know, that Diaz outside boxer style. Throwing on the body, throwing on the body, throwing on the head, boom, down he goes, finish. You know, there's, I, I've, I've seen 150 finishes of this fight. I dream about it day and night. Yeah, you live in my head, but not rent free. Yeah, but what finish are you going to use at 150, man? Like, there's so many visions that you had, but which one are you going to stick with? I only had one vision, and that vision is left hook. That's it. Like, why are you making it so complicated for yourself? What vision are you going to pull out of your ass in the fucking midway of the fight? Like, fuck, dude. Like, have one vision, stick with it. Say 133. 133. <laughs> oh, fucking yeah. Oh, cool. That's good. That's perfect, right? No, yeah, not yeah, before we Before we finish, just uh, one last question is... Uh, can you say, like, one good thing about your point? Just uh, one like respectful thing about your opponent. Just uh, going into this fight and then uh, wish your opponent luck. Just uh, if you want. Yeah, man. Why not, man? Like, yeah, yeah. I definitely like I say. Anybody that fucking signs that line and steps in there, I mean, fuck that. You got you got my fucking token respect for sure. And like I said, uh, if he wants to shake my hand after the fight, I'd be more than welcome. Yeah, he he has the same goal as me, and that's to be a world champion in MMA. And regardless if he wants to be, you know, local or world world level, but can't 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 hate the man that you know has the same visions as you. So I don't hate you, motherfucker. Just don't like the shit that you say online. You know, you pissed me off enough. Fucking, I'm gonna hunt you down. So, you know, threat, promise. Can we, can we get a quick face off?